okay, I know exactly what we need to do. We need keyword pages, we need GMB pages, we need 10 more reviews, we need backlinks, we need to do Google posts, we need a YouTube video with an app, we need uh, Google news sites. Uh, images, posts. Right. I covered it all, Brett. <laughs> I did, right? Yeah. And here we go, three, two, one. Welcome to the JustinSanchezTV.com Lawyer Marketing Show. I have a special guest today, Brett Moletta, someone I've consulted with to help me with some of my own lawyer SEO. And I just wanted to bring him on the show because I think we can all learn a lot from him. Brett, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. All right. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you very much for having me on. Well, I started my I started doing this in 1996, 97, primarily as a website design company. So yeah. um, I worked for the New York City Department of Correction. I got hired January 4th, 1996. And after, you know, walking around the jails on Rikers Island for about six, six months, I said, oh my God, on my days off, I have to do something else besides play PlayStation. I was 29 or 30 at the time. And, <laughs> uh, on my days off, I was playing PlayStation, but I was hurting economically, you know, so I was married at the time and uh, I needed to bring in some more money. So I rented a, uh, at least a, a, um, a laptop that was probably about this thick oh, at the time in 1996 from a place called The Wiz. Nobody yeah. beats The Wiz. Yeah, nobody, <laughs> the beats Wiz. The Wiz. yeah <laughs> nobody beats The Wiz. And I took that laptop and I walked door to door in Staten Island, started off on Port Richmond Avenue and walked door to door with my laptop and I opened it up and I got some owners to plug in their phone line uh, so I could get on America Online and I could wow. show them I could show them what I did. Man, yeah. 96, huh? 1996, early 97, in the 96, early 97. So I'm getting a little bit of refer reverb here. I just don't want your users to, uh, do you hear it? Yeah, I hear myself a little bit. Okay. So that goes on for a couple of years. I'm doing okay. I'm charging three hundred and fifty dollars for a website. So you figure on my days off, I'm 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 getting a customer every 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 day on my days off. So I work four days on, two days off. So every time, every day on my days off, I'm on on. Let's say I was off on a Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday I go out get a client, and on Wednesday I design a website. Man. Yeah. So you know what? I really wasn't doing too bad. You know, I was making like, uh, what, 40, extra $1,400 a month. That was my only goal, three fifty. dollars Get somebody for three fifty, dollars and uh, design the website the next day. Well, after a couple of, um, I'm still getting a little reverb. I'm, I'm so, not getting any. Well, I just don't want your users to, and it's kind of, it's hard to tell the story when I hear myself. Uh, okay. So, in the year 2000, I, op I actually opened a store and it kind of looked like a travel agency. And what I mean by that is, you know, you walk in and you see five guys on, on computers and you could walk in instead of booking your trip to Bermuda, you would walk in and say, hey, I, I need a website. And uh, now I'll make the blue bluer and the red redder. And it really worked out well for a while. People would come in. I didn't need to know anything about Google. But the problem is, is that I was an absentee owner. On the, those at that time, my my past days were Sunday and Monday. Okay. So, uh, I wouldn't get to the store during the week on Tuesday through Saturday until until four thirty until I got home from Rikers Island. My store was in Staten Island. It's about forty minute drive with no traffic, two hours with. Long story short, I um, I ran the store for eleven years. Wow. And unfortunately, at the end. Um, I, I, I was noticing that Dustin would come in for a lawyer website. I would, char I would, I would, I would charge him $3,000. I mean, I would quote him $3,000. We would shake hands. He was happy. He was all pumped, ready to go. And now I can't get in touch with Dustin. Little do I find out that the guys that are sitting next to me are telling Dustin, hey, you know, Brett says that I'm able to, we're able, he doesn't pay us a lot of money. And you know, if you come back at seven o'clock, he said it's all right already. You know, you could come in. We'll we'll do it for fifteen hundred. Oh man, yeah, Your own workers. 
my own workers. And, mm. and, and the crazy bad thing about that is like anybody watching this may say, well, you know what? They, the reason why they did that is because they probably weren't being treated fairly or they weren't. Uh, I, I, I tried to set up my business like a, uh, like a city job, right? Because I was a city worker. And how do you keep city workers? Well, nobody wants to work in a jail, but there are benefits. You get paid every week, every two, every two weeks. Right? You get paid every two weeks, you got health benefits, and you have 401k. And that's what keeps people working. So around 2009, I started setting that up for my clients. I started doing a little bit, you know, uh, I said, look, I want to keep these people. And, and, and I started setting, setting that up for them. Uh, so I really never thought that, that that's something I would do. It was really a punch in the gut. 2011 comes, and I, I have to close my store. Now I'm getting to SEO. Okay. I moved to a virtual office. I moved to a virtual office and I realized that I have a virtual office now. I don't have the store traffic. I don't have the cars driving by, the walk-in traffic, people walking by anymore. I had a, I had a, I had a place on a prominent street in Staten Island where 5,000 cars would pass a day. Now I'm in a building that's a, just a virtual office. So I have a friend, his name was Max from Reduced Printing. He still has his website up. He says, Brett, I, I had the same thing happen to me. Let me show you how to do it. And within a week, I had a virtual assistant. I learned how to use Skype. <laughs> wow. I learned how to use Fiverr. And I learned to use how to use Upwork. The only problem is I couldn't get any new clients besides referrals. So I started learning how to do SEO. And the first person who really taught me how to do SEO comprehensively was a fellow named Paul James. Paul if you have James. a, you know, Paul James? No, just write okay. him down. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Write, him down, write him down. I mean, that is a fellow that showed me, well, he didn't personally show me. He sent me an email somewhere around 2011, 2012, somewhere. If you want to learn about SEO, click here, something like that. And I bought his course for $19. It was all about maps. And from Friday to Sunday, I sat in those days. And all I did was realize that my citations needed to be changed. So I changed all my citations from 6341 Amboy Road to 900 South Avenue. I did it all myself. Uh, I went in, I forgot password, uh, call this number. Like each one was a pain. And I got all my citations changed. And then... By Monday, I was ranking in the Google 7-pack. It used to be a Google 7-pack before it was a 3-pack. Right. And I was like, wow, okay, now I started getting business. I started getting business from, from that. And YouTube still wasn't a thing for me. Anytime I needed a YouTube video, I hired somebody on Fiverr to say, hi, uh, please use Mindsaw. Like, you know, buy from us, you know. Right. I, I, I would never think that I would be on camera. I started following this fellow. His name was Josh Brzezinski. And he is like a master SEO. I mean, he's, he's you know, he, he, he went to school for engineering. He's not just a guy who picked up SEO. He went to school for engineering. He knows how the algorithm works. Like, you know, he, he and I did a consultation with him the way you and I did one. And I was like, after a while, I was like, you know, I'm starting to learn a lot about maps, you know, from watching Paul James and watching Josh Brzezinski. I'm learning about SEO. Maybe I should start doing videos. So I stood there. If you think my face is red now, well, that's because of this mic. I was so scared my first couple of videos. Like, I was like <laughs> my name is Brett Maletta. You ever see like uh, the Honeymooners with Ralph Cramden, Kinecore Apple? <laughs> you know, I was like, uh, uh, uh. so I didn't want to be like everyone else. So I was like, hey, if you want to get into Google three pack, and I didn't say it so smoothly. If you want to get into Google three pack, change your citations. And uh, uh, if you want to get healthy, start using black seed oil. Like I wanted to be different. So I was thrown in health products. Okay. It was an utter, it was a disgrace. It was embarrassing. But you know what? You don't have to be great to start, but you got to start to be great. Right? In order to be great, Absolutely. you got to at least start. I took down all my videos. I didn't do another video for three or four years. But I started. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was afraid. 
I, 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 I mean, still today, before I get on a uh, call, it's still, it's still, I still get jitters. Anyway, um, I said, I said somewhere around 2015, 16, 17, somewhere in mid, mid to late 16, somewhere around there. I said, you know what? I'm going to start doing videos again, but I'm not going to show my face. Okay. I have so much map knowledge. Maybe I could help somebody. Like I never thought that I could get business off YouTube. But maybe if I could create this video, maybe I could help other people who was in my situation. So I learned how to use Camtasia, which is an editing program. And uh, I made a video. The video to this date has 37 or 36,000 views. I'm not breaking the internet. I mean, a girl could shake her ass and in 15 minutes, she could get 37 thousand views this video is up there for several years you know three four years five years something like that um you know but it has 30 30 something thousand views and and here's the crazy thing after i made it i started getting phone calls hey Mm -hmm. can you get me in the google three pack can you get me in the google three pack and i was like i never thought like i never thought i don't know why i put those two things together that i could get business from it i just did videos to help people because i felt like you know what to be honest with you when I, when I know something, I'm like the type of guy in a party that knows the secret in the movie and has to get all the guys around. Well, let me tell you what happened in this movie. <laughs> Gather around. Uh, Jaws isn't really a real shark. You know, it's mechanical. <laughs> and his real name was Henry, they used to call him. You know, Andre the Giant was seven feet, seven feet seven. You know, so like I'm that type of guy when I'm in the mood. Most of the time I'm not in the mood. But if I'm not, but I like to, I like to, I like to talk about things that I know. And, and at this point, I really knew maps. So I put this video together. I started getting clients, but I couldn't put a video together again for several months after that. A couple of months after that. If my member, and maybe I put one together like right after that, but then not again for several months. And, um, and, um, one day i was just getting so much so many calls i'm like why don't i make this part of my schedule like i wake up in the morning i go do my little workout i make my video i check my staff and and i and i make videos and and that's basically what i do and i go on little tangents where i'll make like two weeks worth of videos and then get busy with something like you know it's really good for the algorithm uh for the youtube algorithm if you're gonna make videos monday wednesday and friday just make them those three days, but Google knows, I mean, YouTube knows that those are the days your videos are coming out. Do that for about four months and you'll start to get into the algorithm. I go like a football player. You know, I go all at once. I go all at once. And then once I stop, I stop. So that's like still my problem. So that's yeah. still my problem. But YouTube has been very, very good to me. You know, it's been very good. I'm now getting clients from literally all over the world. And consulting with people all over the world. And, uh, you know, it's something that's in my wheelhouse right now. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to say these are a the couple of people that you should be, sh- if, you, if you like my work, these are a couple of people that you should be following. You should one be following, if you're brand new, you should be following Paul James. If you go to uh, YouTube, just type in Paul James SEO. Okay. Right. I'll should be following that at the show notes and I'll put it on the screen. Yeah, and post yeah, it. yeah. You should def- These are the people that helped me. Um, uh, a fella that I just started, you know, watching over the past year or two is Chris Palmer. Right. That's another that's another good SEO. Another one is uh, Ruan Marino, M-R-U-A-N-M-A-H-R-I-N-O. He's with Develop Mark, Develop Mark or Develop Mark, something like that. And and he's a really good SEO. And uh, the last but not least, uh, my friend Darren over at Rattel SEO, he has a couple of videos out. He's kind of like me, like, you know, put out a bunch and sit back for a little bit. But, you know, if you want to learn about about maps, if that's your interest, you know, definitely watch my channel for sure. But those are some other channels you should look watch. And at the end of a couple of months, you should have a really good idea as to, you know, how to how to get your listing in maps. So that's that's all about me. I got I got I have two boys, uh, twenty and twenty three. Okay, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's funny how you mentioned that your workers were kind of stealing from you. Uh, you know, they weren't kind of stealing from me. They were stealing. They were actually stealing from you. You know, this industry. I don't know if it just attacks a, attracts attracts scammy people, but. 
uh, learning this business, SEO and online marketing, one of the first things I had to learn was just how to know who was a BS artist and who was actually knew what they were doing. You married? Uh, and same thing, when I tried to hire people, uh, I ran into that same issue as well. Now let, I got let me stop you right there. Let me stop you right there. Right. So hiring people is like dating. And you don't you're look, you're going to be able to filter out a lot of people on the first date. They're going to say things that ring a flag and you're just going to say it was very nice meeting you. I wish you the best. Right. But there's going to be some people that tell you everything they want to hear. You're not going to know until you fully trust them after several months. And then they re then they go in and do their thing. Yeah. So here's my here's my thing. And and this is going to be, you know, some people are going to get mad, but this is truth. And this is this is my truth. I'm afraid of Americans. Right. You ever hear that song by David Bowie? I'm afraid of Americans. Yes. Every single American has has screwed me. For some reason, they feel that my business is their business. Every single one. When I work with people in other countries, they're very grateful to one, have a job be paid very well and be able to work from home. I never have to worry. Once a year, I have my brother-in-law call up from uh, XYZ company. Hey, I need a website. I always get the lead. I never have a problem. Never, ever. I've never had a problem since 2011. Yeah. Uh, I do find a lack of entitlement when I hire from other countries. Yep. You know, and... And loyalty. You're saying they think your company is their company. As if you're, you're, making, you're making too much money. You put in. Correct. And they don't care about that. So I once read a book about, about that same subject. So the thing was, what they said was, hey, look, you don't want to say I made $20,000 this month. Take a look at everybody come out and take a look at my brand new car. Right. While they're taking a bike to work. Or I'm going to Australia this week because we had a really good, you know, I'm going, right? So what I did was I, sh another thing I did with my staff back in, when, when I had the store in Staten Island was share profits. Ooh. So I said, yeah, yeah, made them part of the team. If we get, listen to this, if you get 20,000 this month, uh, everybody gets an extra five or $800 or whatever it was. So I, I shared about uh, like 10 or 20% of my profit with, with the staff. So I did that, I paid them a fair wage. Nobody had to drive more than five or six miles to get there. They got a 401k and, and, uh, and they still stole. That's terrible, man. No, it's not because here's what happened. I closed my store. I had a sinking feeling in my heart for a year. One, I was hurt that these people hurt me. But after a while, it started to set in that I didn't have to go to my store and shovel snow anymore so people could walk by. And I didn't have to turn the heater on before my staff got there because it was, you know, zero degrees that day. So before correction, I would get there at five in the morning, turn the heater on. So when they got there at eight or nine, it was warm. Right? right. So I realized I didn't have to do those things anymore. Not only that, I got Ring Central, which is a voice over IP. And, and I didn't have to sit at the office anymore. So I could call from the beach and, 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 and it comes from my landline 2300. I realized I didn't have to stay in one place. They did me a favor. I always think if I'd seen their person now that I'm retired, because I couldn't do anything then because I was um, I had five years to go was before I retired from the Department of Correction. I wasn't going to jeopardize my pension. OK, but now I'm retired and my pension's uh, locked. So, you know. I could I could do whatever I still get my pension, so I'm always thinking like now I live in Florida I moved you know thousands of thousand miles away if I were to see them what would I do, I think I'd still punch them, <laughs> but <laughs> but I'll be honest with you but I'll be honest with you, you know I I should really just shake their hand because sometimes in life, you you need to get kicked out of the nest, right. Right, you're too comfortable there. You need to get kicked out, and somebody above you knows that you don't belong there. Like, what else can you do? Like, I was losing money, losing money, losing money, and I was like putting in my own money, and I was getting them 401ks, and I was sharing profits that I didn't have to keep them. Right, like what, like dummy? What else do you need? Okay, now they stole from me. Now what are you gonna do? Man. Right. So, so that's what I did, and. Uh, 
So it was, you know, now I'm in Florida and I could go like uh, in a couple of months when this pandemic, I get this shot. I'm going to the Philippines for a little while for 30 days. And my business runs seamlessly because I don't need, I'm not location specific. Nobody meets with me in person and shakes hands with me. Right? right. Anybody wants to meet, they meet like this. I'll give them all the time they want until they feel comfortable. Remember, nobody does business with you until they like you and they trust you. Absolutely. We, we're doing this right here. Right. You like and trust me. But people get my get to know my personality from seeing me on my YouTube channel. They see me on my YouTube channel and uh, they build up a relationship with me. They know what type of foods I like. They know what type of sports I like. They know, you know, they get to know about me. And then, you know, somebody will call me up and uh, or send me an email. And when I call them, they're like, whoa, I can't believe you called me. Like I'm like, I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> like I'm Elvis or somebody. Like I'm just a guy that just graduated, you know, just got out of high school. I barely made it, you know, but, but, uh, you know, so so it's it's quite an honor because people have built you so, had such a relationship with you that they couldn't believe they're actually talking with you. I'm just a regular guy that started a YouTube channel. Yeah, it's it's been very hard for me to convince my own clients how valuable YouTube is. Uh, and you know, That's when I learn, what's that? That's the beauty of it, and I'll tell you why. You have ten lawyers, nine of which will never go on YouTube. Right. So you'll never have the competition like the Google three pack has because everybody wants to be in that. It's anonymous. You don't have to do anything. You just have to pay. But you have to. Have, but to do a YouTube channel, you have to have balls. Right. You have to be able to turn that mic on and you have to be able to say, hi, my name is. Excuse me. Hi, my name is Brett Maletta uh, with Brett Maletta Law Firm. And today I want to teach you the three things you need to know if you get arrested for DUI. Step one. Don't get out of the car. Two, don't do the idiot test. You know, whatever whatever the lawyer says. By the way, anybody watching this, don't do the idiot test where you touch your nose and walk on the line. <laughs> that's that's not mandatory. I'm not giving legal advice. Look it up yourself. But <laughs> yeah. but don't but don't you know you know there's there's things that you that you could do and things that you don't do. And it was through a personal uh, a family member who got arrested for DUI where I had to do some. I had to do some research and I realized all the things that they did not, they weren't legally required to do. You know, that big, deep breath. <gasps> hey, look, if you get, if you do kickboxing, you get kicked in the ribs, you can only, you, you know, you, you may will only, you can't do a six, five. You may only be able to blow a two, a two, five, which is, which is, which is, you know, just barely legal. You know, you don't, you know, well, Whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm not giving advice, but these are the these are the types of advices that that lawyers should be giving, because if God forbid I had one and I went on YouTube to try to find a lawyer, I would try to have that relationship with that lawyer. And the good thing is that the other nine lawyers aren't doing that. I want to right. know the guy's personality. Right. I want to know if he's an aggressive guy, an assertive guy or a wormy type guy. I don't want that person representing me. I can't tell that on his website. He needs to have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, you mentioned teach. Like, I think that was the key word because what a lot of attorneys will do is they'll just make a television commercial on YouTube as opposed to teaching someone something about their specific part of the law. That's 1970s. We're not at that anymore. Yeah. People go on YouTube and Google for, for information, not to hear that we're the best and we're family owned since 2010. Okay. Well, look, man, you're the maps expert. I actually took some maps training from you. I found you on YouTube. So let's talk about maps now. Google maps. Okay. okay. What do you think is more valuable in organic ranking, like one through 10 to be number one or to be number one in the Google maps three pack? Without a doubt. And it's not because that's my specialty. It's the Google maps. And that's the reason why it is my specialty. It's my specialty because that's the better of the two. And let me explain why. Okay. When, you check, when you do a, 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 um, a search for a DUI lawyer and you do it on your mobile device, you're going to have a tap to call. Yep. You're going to have a tap to call. Right? So a couple of things that I want to know. I want to know how far away they are from me. So that's not really big for a DUI lawyer unless I'm in jail. Right. But but I want to know how far away they are from me. 
And the second thing I want to know is how many how many reviews did I have? And five star reviews. Well, four star reviews, I'll take that. I can't get that information in the one through 10. And if it's if it's something like a DUI lawyer, I certainly do not want to start clicking through uh, Yelp and, and Angie's List and Thumbtack and advertisements and directories. Like, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. I want to see somebody who's who's fairly close to me, who could come help me. And I want to see uh, somebody with a lot of five-star reviews. Yeah. I probably won't even go to the website. Exactly. Um, because important. you're clicking that telephone icon, That's you're it. bypassing the website. Right. The website is just for Google. So Google knows you do family law, DUI law, uh, criminal law, civil law. That's just for that's just for Google. That's not for me. I mean, if I want to, there's a place where I could click the website and I could read about that. But I don't know what I'm possibly going to read that I, you know, that I don't already. I, I need help. I want to speak to the lawyer. Now you point. mentioned reviews. How important are Google reviews in terms of getting into the maps? So user signals are extremely important. What do I mean by user signals? Google reviews directions to your physical location. So Dustin, if you had a law firm, I would suggest to you to do a giveaway or a COVID masks, give COVID masks, you know, or something where people have to put in 1010 Main Street, drive to you. Once they get the masks, maybe give them a $5 gift card for a five-star review. You understand? Yeah. Those are user signals. People are coming to you. They're using Google Maps to get to you, and they use and they get and they're giving you a review at your location. That's like a little gem what I just gave you. Okay. Oh, so you're saying maybe they're sitting at their office or at home, and they click on the directions button, and then drive there, and then once they're there, you're handing off the gift, but then they review you right there at your law firm. Give them the give them the gift card. Give them the five dollar gift card. And four and uh, so Dunkin' Donuts or something. I guess Google's maybe taking the location data from their phone. Yep. And that's what people don't understand is the location. Google Maps is all about location. Correct. Um. And so that's why these cell phones. Uh, I try to get people. Hey, ask them to review you on your phone. Right. Um. Uh, <clears throat> What about, is there a danger if they're at your office and they're on your Wi-Fi now that review maybe is coming from your IP address? You know, I, I don't know. And, and I, I have no shame saying I don't know something. When I don't know it, I say I don't know. I had, I had a client several, a couple of years ago that would set up kiosks with iPads. And all you did was you signed into your Google account using their iPad. So I went to a dentist. And when I was finished with the service, the secretary would say, hey, would you mind giving us a review? Just log into the kiosk here. So you logged in with your Gmail account and you gave the five-star review. I, I assume it's the same Wi-Fi all the time. Hmm. Just different Gmail accounts. But it's coming from that location. Okay. So I'll just leave it at that. And the guy said he was very successful doing that. What about... Uh... I'm forever, now that we know Google reviews are so important, I am forever trying to help my clients get more Google reviews. Yeah. Uh, what's some methods that you use to help people get more reviews, real reviews, as opposed to buying reviews from someone sitting in India or something? Right, right. Well, first of all, uh, the first thing that I said, right, give a mask giveaway, have people come on a Saturday and get a Google review. The other thing is if that lawyer was ballsy enough to say, hey, if you've been arrested for a DUI, these are the three things you want to know. If you like this video, please give us a five-star review. Okay. Right? I do it on my videos all the time. I have 140 uh, uh, Google reviews. I'm trying to get 300 by year's end. By 2021, I'd like to get 300. I'd like to double that. Actually, Brett, that's really smart because... I have hunt tons of happy clients, but I tell all of my SEO clients, don't review me. 
because I don't want these scammy SEO people backtracking my backlinks, like going to throw my clients into the uh, backlink tracker like Ahrefs and then right. spamming my clients. Now I can just say, hey, if you liked this video, you know, go give me a review. So that's I think it's that important that people are going to actually spend all that time to Ahrefs you and back and then find your clients and yeah, it happens to me all the time. Not anymore. Yeah. Now I have things in place, but okay, all right, all right, it happens all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, it hasn't happened to me. I don't really care about that. But if it happened to you, I'm glad that you're doing it. I'm sure my experiences you haven't gone through my experiences. I haven't gone through yours, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea, right? Give something of value, and then and then uh, ask for a review. And you could do that on Facebook and you could do it on, uh, right? You do a little Facebook video, you do a little uh, YouTube video, so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah, a lot of my uh, lawyer clients think that these reviews can only come from clients, from people they did work for. But the way you kind of describe it is, if you enjoyed the video, uh, Go give, give me a review on Google. That's that's actually a great tactic. Yeah. Um, how about uh, you? You earlier you mentioned citations. I don't know if people know what citations are, but say Yelp.com. You have a profile on Yelp. That's one of the most popular citations. It has to do with your name, address, phone number. Uh, maybe two years ago, I was building three hundred local citations. Right. Uh, now. We're kind of building 20, like 20 really hand hand built good ones. What do you think about the amount of local citations for any one business? How important is that? That's a very good question. So I hope I could answer this. Uh, uh, I hopefully I could answer this in a very easy in a very easy way. And let me let me let me tell you what I mean. I used to do the same thing. I used to do 300, 350 sites. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just, it may be busy work. Yeah. Right? So what I would do is I would get 20 citations. Now, I'll use Yelp as, a, as, a, as an example. So you have yelp.com slash mindsaw. If you put Yelp into uh, Hrefs or SEMrush or Majestic, that domain name has a domain name authority of probably 91 or 93, something like that. But if you put in slash Mindsaw, you know, Yelp.com slash Mindsaw, that domain has now a domain rating of domain authority of maybe 15 or 10. So what I would do, and I learned this from a fellow's name is Mike Steffens, is get your 20 citations but build up the authority on those citations. Okay. Run links towards those citations. Gotcha. Right? So instead of having a 15, now you have a 45. Now it's yelp.com slash mine. So instead of having a domain authority of a 15, it now has a domain authority of a 45. And now that link is stronger. So instead of having 350, uh, uh, citations. You have 20 strong citations. Now, the last thing, and I'm glad I didn't forget this, the last thing that I want to say is, is, is in regards to citations, all citations are a name, address, and phone number. Name, address, and phone number. Other, otherwise known as NAP. Name, address, and phone number. You want to go over to a site like Fiverr. Find somebody who does Google uh, news articles, find a article in your industry. We're using DUI law as a, as a, uh, as a uh, example, find a story, have it rewritten. And in the middle of the story, put your nap, your name, address, and, and phone number Jones and Jones, 1010 main street, Tampa, Florida, three, three, seven, eight, two and their phone number, 727, whatever that is, and get 15 stories, put it on there, then get a YouTube video, which is another Google property. And in the description, write the description of the video and put the nap in there. 
if you do that to 15 Google sites, you do 15 Google news sites, you do one or two YouTube videos and a couple of citations, that should be good. Okay. Good. I don't believe you need to do 350 citations anymore. Yeah. The main reason I stopped doing that was my clients would move to maybe a, another part of town and we had all these citations we didn't we couldn't log into and change and inevitably when we hired someone to fix them they maybe fixed half of them and yeah. now our uniformity was all messed up yeah yeah so uh with that being said there are places that could fix all your citations but it could be quite expensive now the first one is a place called yext y e x t mm -hmm. It's about a thousand, I think it's either five, I always forget, it's either 500 or a thousand dollars a year. But as soon as you stop paying them, it, it, you know, your citations get messed up again. So it's an ongoing thing. It's a forever thing. But they have a control panel that they capture all, like a dashboard, and you just go in and change the address and it goes out to about 60 or 70 citations. So if you keep changing your address, it's not a problem. Okay. And they could also fix your citations. There's also another site called The Hoth, T-H-E-H-O-T-H, -E The Hoth. And they fix citations. And then there's another one. I mean, I could keep going, but there's another one called Whitespark.ca, Whitespark.ca. And uh, what Whitespark will do, you know, my dog barks once a week. And now yeah. he decided to bark. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have an American bully. Yeah, now we decided to block. All right, so whitespark.ca, whitespark.ca is a um, is a uh, another place that could fix your citations. But it, you know it's going to be costly. But the good thing about the Hoth and Whitespark is Spark is it's not an ongoing thing. Okay, one time payment. They could help, and also um, I think Moz has a citation fixer. I used to use Moz back when it was like eighty four bucks a year. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't, I don't use them anymore. Okay. How about, uh, some of the more expensive citations like better business bureau? I think it's mm. like 500 bucks a year for that one backlink. What I would do is I would go to the hot, listen, I had a client, we'll call him, uh, let's see, we'll call him, we'll call him, uh, Jones and Ewing. That's good. Jones and Ewing. I had a client, a law firm called Jones and Ewing. I got them to first place in every keyword by June. And by August, they fired me. <laughs> <laughs> they started to drop in the rankings. They didn't like it. But it happens. So uh, what was I going to say? So so uh, wait, what did you just ask me about? I'm asking about better business bureau. Oh, better business. Like okay, so yeah, so I had to get them a better business bureau link because their all their competition had that link. Okay. If if your competition has it, you need to get it. Uh, another one was A V V O. Mm -hmm. Justia. Yep. Uh, those were the big ones. If, if your competition is paying for those links and they're above you, you need to have them. But that's really not the most important thing. The most important, those are, those are, so if, if, if the, if the tips that I gave you was a pizza pie, yep. I just gave you one half, all the stuff that I said privately, cool. but here's the other half. The other half is setting up your website correctly. Okay. When you set up your website, you could do all these little tricks, but if your website is garbage, you're not going to rank. You could go get $500 better business bureau links and Avo and Justia. It's not going to work or it's not going to work as well. What you need to do is you need to set up your homepage for your Google My Business category. So if you're trying to rank as a DUI lawyer, I think the main category off the top of my head is, is attorney. Yeah, criminal justice. Criminal right. justice attorney, right? Yeah. Everything on your homepage should be about criminal justice attorney, right? Then you should have a DUI page as your keyword page. But what you need to do is you got to need to go over a website called Plepper, P-L-E-P-E-R. 
And on Plepper, give me a second. I know you can't. I just so I could. I'm just going to tell you what to do. Wait one second. Okay. Just go to Plepper, right? And then there's a link called Tools. You click Tools, and it says it says uh, Google My Business Categories Full List 2020. And you will see there's a little search box. There's a little search box that's underneath the blue fetch Google my business categories. And if you type in criminal, what is it? Criminal justice attorney. Yeah. If you type in criminal justice attorney, what Plepper will show you are the next categories that you should have as category two as your GMB category three and category four. Okay. So you go over to Plepper, you, 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 you click the tools, you click that link, you scroll down a little bit and you'll see a little search bar. You type in criminal justice attorney and it'll give you the four other categories that you should go in order. So, for example, civil law may be one, uh, criminal law, uh, uh, family law, trial law, right? So you have your homepage set up as criminal justice attorney. Everything on your homepage should be about criminal justice attorney. Whatever services you need for a criminal justice attorney and talking about a criminal justice attorney. You don't talk about everything that you do. You don't talk that your family owned since 2010 and how great you are. You talk about being a criminal justice attorney and what, and you need to answer questions. What is a criminal justice attorney? What does a criminal justice attorney do? What types of cases do they handle? You need to answer all those questions on your homepage. You need to find images once you type in criminal justice attorney into Google in your area. So if you're in Texas, if you're what part of Texas you're in? Houston. Houston, Texas. You need to go to Google and type in criminal justice attorney in Google, click images and see what type of images. Are they are they two police officers handcuffing a person? Is it a person sitting at a desk? Is it somebody sitting in a jail cell? Is it is it a judge's gavel? Right. And those are the images that you need to use on your homepage. Those type of images. You can't just use pictures that you'll. I mean, I, I had a I had an attorney from Texas with with, with uh, steer. Is that is that what it's called? Steer? They're 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 like bulls. Like bull horns. Bull horns. You want to show yeah. he was a bull. Yeah, he's a bull. He's a bull. Rrr. And he put the bulls all over his website. He said, I can't rank this garbage. I don't know how else nice to say it. Bulls have nothing to do. You may be a bull, but bulls have nothing to do with law. Okay. Take your bulls, take your family dog, take your kids, and take them off the homepage of your website. Find the images that are in Google for criminal justice attorney in your area and use those type of images. Pay very attention, very, very close attention. Is it one police car? Is it two police cars? Is it two officers? What nationality are, are the officers? Right. And then get images. You can't steal those images, but get those images from iStock or wherever you get images from and use those images on your homepage. Now, your first link shouldn't be home or about us or FAQs with people. Your first link should be your second GMB category, which may be trial lawyer. Does that make sense? Yes. And everything on that first link, when you click that link, that says trial trial lawyer should be everything about trial lawyer and you do the same thing okay and then your third link should be a drop down from your second link so your home page you have is the first gmb category then you have your first link which is your second gmb category which is trial lawyer and then below that is uh criminal justice or whatever the whatever the third link is uh give me another category i don't know Really, only one for criminal. It's criminal, criminal law. Yeah. Okay. I, I just forget. I, I I I forget. And and so on and so forth. But only use three to five GMB categories. Don't go crazy using okay. nine GMB categories. Okay. So now you have your GMB pages. Excellent. Right. You got your GMB pages. Now you have your next link, which should be legal services. Now you're talking about menu links. Yep. Okay. Menu links up on top should say legal services and your legal services those are your keyword pages right not your gmb category so if you have if you do dui law if you do bankruptcy 
if you do, those are your pages. Gotcha. Okay. Now, after those two links, you could go put FAQs about us, contact us, contact. whatever you want, whatever you want, whatever you blog, whatever you want to put after that. But your first set of links should be your GMB categories. Your second set of links should be your legal services with a drop down of all your legal services. And if they branch off, then they should go, you know, branch off. And then after that, put up, put whatever you want. Now, if you're not ranking for DUI law, you're going to, if you're trying to rank for DUI law, you're going to have to go to the competitor, see who's ranking number one for DUI law, and you need to see how many words they have on that page. There's a website called wordcounter.net. Copy and paste, put it into wordcounter, and see how many words. They're using 750. Right away, I'll go 1,500. All right, I'll double it. I'll double it. Give me 1,500 words. Answer these questions on DUI law, and, and I'll add that to the page. Now, if, if I'm still not ranking for DUI law, I get what's called um, uh, just little articles. Okay. So if this, is, if this is my DUI lawyer page, I'll just get like a little article and I'll just link to that about DUI law. So you ever go to type in DUI lawyer and scroll all the way down to the bottom of Google and it'll say, it'll say related, suge related suggestions? Yes. I'll write... I'll write 500 words about each one of those suggestions. I'll get three, and I'll just link it to the DUI law page. So what are those, a blog article on the website? Yeah, yeah, you could do blog. You can make them blog articles. You could show them. You don't have to show them. You know, just make sure that all your, all your pages that you, that, you, that you write are indexed. Okay. Okay. Man, that's a lot, a lot of stuff there. I got maybe four pages right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to send you my bill. This was a free conversation. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then what you do is, is now you know you have enough content, right? You know you have enough content. You have 1,500 words. You're out doing your plays and content. Okay. Now what you want to do is you got to call the lawyer and you got to say, hey, look, I need several reviews this week from you saying, hey, I was looking for a DUI lawyer in Gotcha. I lost connection for a second. Okay. So you're talking about getting several reviews in one Get several one reviews time. using that keyword. Now, you as the SEO, try to get some backlinks using and put a modifier, modifier in front or behind it. So, you know, if you go to Google and you type in DUI lawyer and type in after lawyer or before, take a space. Put DUI lawyer, and in that space, put A. It'll say affordable, right? right? That may be one of the suggestions. So do affordable DUI lawyer. Do uh, 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 DUI lawyer uh, and, and get several links pointing okay. to that page, not your home page, to the DUI lawyer page. Okay, I thought you were saying pointing at the review. So pointing to the okay. DUI lawyer page. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Uh, just for clarification, you know, if you're a DUI lawyer, your main GMB category is going to be criminal justice attorney. And so right. you're saying have a keyword page, DUI lawyer page, and, and that's going to be an inner page, not your home page. Correct. Now, the other thing that you want to do is you want to start pumping out your Google posts, your GMB yeah. posts. And in your GMB posts, you want to use a relevant image for DUI lawyer Houston. Don't just pick any picture you like. Go to Google, type in DUI Lawyer Houston, and see what pictures are coming up relevant. Get your image, and this is what I need you to do on your image. Very, very simple. You download your image. It's two police officers arresting somebody. That's the image that's most popular. You find an image on iStock that you could buy. You put it on your Google post. Now, in your Google post, you need to put your logo on that picture, Lower right-hand corner, lower left-hand corner, you need to add your NAP, your name, address, and phone number. And on the top, going across it, DUI Lawyer Houston. Gotcha. And then, you write, and then you write your post about that, and then you link to that page, to your, to your DUI Lawyer page on your post. Now, with that image, don't just do your Google My Business post. Throw it out on Facebook. Share that image a lot. 
So if you go to, um, I, I forget what he, where he's, no, he's located in Tennessee. One of my clients, a chat in, I, I think Knoxville. If you type in Knoxville electrician into Google, you'll see my client, which is Forster Electric, also known as Knoxville electrician. But like all the images are his images. All the images are his images because what we did was what what people do is they just put up images and they don't brand your images. Google is looking for your logo, your nap, and your keyword and share those around the web. So what, that's what we did with them. And that really helped his rankings. Okay. It was very strong in, in, in image search. I haven't done a lot with images yet. Okay. Let's start. Okay, well, we're coming up on 45 minutes here. I don't want to keep you too long. Sure. Let me just tell everyone where they can find you if they want to know more about mindsaw.com or what you can do for them in terms of Google Maps. Where's the best place to find you on the internet? Uh, just at my website, mindsaw.com. Uh, but I would suggest to watch one or two of my videos. So this way you could get a little bit more of my personality. And like I said, people don't work with people unless they like and trust them. I don't know if everybody likes and trusts me. So I said a couple of really cool things here, but you know, maybe you should watch one or two of my videos. If you just go to YouTube and type in Mindsaw, you'll be able to see a couple of my videos. Maybe, you know, maybe one of one or two of my videos have the missing piece for you to help you rank in the Google three pack. I mean, if you still can't figure it out. And, and and you'd like to work with me, uh, you know, definitely reach out to me. My uh, email address is just my name, Brett Moletta at gmail.com. B-R-E-T-M-O-L-E-T-A at gmail.com. You just hit me an email, say, hey, this is my business. These are the keywords I'm trying to rank for. And I don't, I only take clients that I could win with. Like, you know, like if you're rank, trying to rank DUI lawyer Manhattan and you got a small bu budget, I'm sorry, I'm not your guy. Right. I only, I only, because there's too much business. Why would I take a challenge? I, I only take home runs. I only hit home runs. Home run hitter. Great I'm strategy. The, I'm the Babe Ruth of, uh, yeah, yeah. Why am I going to rack my brains out for five months trying to rank somebody, make them unhappy when I could get the next client who's like, okay, I know exactly what we need to do. We need keyword pages, we need GMB pages, we need 10 more reviews, we need backlinks. We need to do Google posts. We need a YouTube video with a nap. We need uh, Google news sites. Uh, images, posts. Right. Covered it all, Brent. <laughs> I did, right? Yeah. <laughs>